Hi friends! Today I wanted to come to you as a seasoned mom of three children who are now 10, 8, and almost 7. How on earth have my kids grown up this fast? I really don't even know, but here we are. Now, having three kids and degrees in early childhood and child life psychology, and also having these certifications in sleep consulting and potty training consulting and baby sign language and teaching music and movement classes, all these things that I've done through the years have given me a bit of wisdom. I wanna share with you some of the things that I have loved that I've done as a newborn mom and some of the things that I regret. Let's go through a morning routine with a a newborn baby and talk about how you can really improve your days as a newborn mom to kind of get out of that new mom, mommy, zombie, whatever you want to call it mode and really feel like you are soaking up the experience and enjoying it. Because if I can give you one little bit of advice that you take from this video, I want you to really focus on what you love and enjoy about being a new mom and to really, really, really soak up the experience. I feel like so much of me was just going through the motions and just it goes by so fast it goes by so so fast I wasn't even planning on like going off on this tangent I was planning on like starting with what to do first thing in the morning and I just feel so passionately about really enjoying every moment of your newborn baby's life because like I'm like I'm literally gonna cry like my kids are so grown up I really really miss those slow quiet moments with them so all right <laughs> now let's pretend that you had a typical night with a newborn and you were up several times and that's completely normal and to be expected but what I want you to do first thing in the morning is to wake up at 7 a.m. I know I know it's going to be hard and I remember when I was first starting to research about baby sleep and like just getting out of that fog, that funk of those like first couple months that's just like a blur. Comment down below if you are in those first few months and you are like, I don't even know what is going on like with my life. Like, have I showered? Have I brushed my teeth? And we'll get into all of that. I don't want you to feel like that. I want you to have structure and predictability. So the first thing that you really have to do is wake up at the same time every day. As much as we wanna sleep in until like 9 or 10 a.m., it's just not developmentally appropriate and it's not going to help your child correct that day versus night confusion. Just wake up with the sun, get up at, I mean, not really with, I mean, depending on the time of year, but let's just go with 7 a.m. because that is a perfect time. You can push it to eight, but let's not go any any later than 8 a.m., okay? What I want you to do is wake up, open the curtains, get your baby up, say good morning, have a little morning, like first thing in the morning routine. This whole thing is gonna be a morning routine. Get into a routine where you wake up, you go get your baby, you give, greet your baby with a big good morning, I love you so much, good morning, like everything is fantastic even though we're so freaking tired. That's okay because you're going to have an opportunity to nap. But you're going to separate your baby's first feeding of the day from however you feed them overnight. So if you're going into your baby's room, more likely than not, your baby is still sleeping in like the bassinet next to your bed. So let's just assume that you are picking up your baby out of the bassinet, you are saying good morning, you're opening the curtains, you are going to leave the bedroom, you're going to get washed up, you're gonna wash up your baby, just like real quick, this can be three to five minutes. So you're not starving your child. It is like seriously, the wind outside right now. If you can hear the wind, it is what it is. Like it is so windy out there. I think there's tornadoes down south and we're getting like the remnants of that right now. But anyways, I want you to just like wipe your baby's face down with like a wet cloth, change their diaper, change their clothes, and then feed them in a well-lit room. This will be the beginning of your eat, play, sleep cycle. You are going to be in this eat, play, sleep routine for several months. So just get used to it as soon as possible then you are going to play. So you are going to play with your baby. Now that does not mean that you are going to get out the toys and do all the things. Your baby is probably a couple weeks old. So all you really have to do, okay, is, let me get into position. Put your feet up, put your baby right here. Put their, put their back on your legs. Do I have a doll around here? I don't have a doll around here. Oh my gosh, my, my oldest made me this adorable coaster, so I'm gonna pretend this is a baby, okay? This is his face. <laughs> oh my baby! You're gonna hold them like this on your lap, and you are going to talk to them, you are going to look at them, you're gonna tell stories, 
yeah, you know, you're gonna have that baby talk time with your kid and you are going to have that conversation with your baby and you're gonna say, it's gonna be such a great day. You're gonna talk to each other, you're gonna feel cheesy and you're gonna sing some songs and then once your baby's food is digested, I'm talking like five to 10 minutes, then you're gonna get down on the floor and you're gonna have some tummy time and then you're gonna change your baby's diaper and then it's gonna be time for a nap because infant wake windows are so short that it is just going to go by very quickly. For the first nap of the day, you are going to put your baby down in the crib and you're gonna see what happens. If they fall asleep independently, then that is absolutely incredible. I would have very low expectations, but I want you to continue practicing. Practice letting your child fall asleep independently just for one nap. If it happens, fantastic. If not, help soothe your child to sleep. By all means, they are a newborn and you should have no expectations of them falling asleep on their own. But if they do, if they do, then mama, it's time for you to go take a nap. If they don't fall asleep on their own, it is fine. Help them fall asleep. See if you can get them to sleep in the crib or the bassinet, wherever they sleep at night, do it for naps as well. But this is the perfect time to sleep when the baby sleeps. No expectations about your baby taking this like big, long, independent nap. Like even if it's only 30 minutes and you only sleep for 20 minutes, great, you got a power nap. Now what I want you to do next is to get out of the house, okay? Like I have painted every single room in my house because I got so sick of looking at the same color walls day in and day out. I just couldn't take it anymore and I went with these bright, bold colors because why wouldn't I? I was looking at these drab playing colors for a way too long that I just like I had I needed a change. So if you want to avoid the manual labor, get out of the house. Go to a coffee shop, meet up with a friend, or go find a mom group, go grocery shopping, go walk around the zoo, go walk around a park, just get out of the house. And this is a great time for your child to have a nap on the go. They are only, you know, a couple weeks old, maybe two or three months old. Sleeping on the go is perfectly fine. It's not going to ruin anything. This is the time if your child is going to nap on the go on a very less structured schedule slash non-structured schedule, just following the e-play sleep routine, this is the time for them to be able to sleep on the go so go just do not coop yourself up in the house because you're afraid of the big bad world out there because you like that it's a recipe for postpartum depression to be quite honest and just getting out there in the world and just like either finding people or just people watching just go out and do something now if and when your baby falls asleep while you're on the go you should definitely let them sleep in the car. It is fine, you are watching them. Now, we know that letting your baby sleep in the car seat for an extended amount of time is not recommended and is not healthy because it puts them at risk for the positional asphyxiation with their chin up um, against their chest and not being able to breathe very well. However, if you are sitting in the car and watching them, it is perfectly fine. Now you can let them sleep for the duration of the nap, either go for a long drive, listen to an audiobook. That is my favorite thing to do when I drive around is to just have like sip on a drink. It doesn't have to be coffee, but if you're tired, coffee might be a good idea. Any beverage will do and any audiobook or music is totally fine. Just drive around, let the car lull your baby to sleep for a little bit, or even just sit in the driveway if that will keep your baby asleep. Let them get a proper proper it's not really proper but let them have this nap go home go in the house when they're awake and live that life of the eat play sleep routine you are now in the play portion of the routine put your baby on the floor let your child play on the floor now obviously a very little tiny new baby is going to maybe do five to 10 minutes of tummy time maybe more maybe less but as long as you are there watching them and they are content enough about it, then it will be a great time for your child to practice those muscle building skills. I've seen far too many parents who have been afraid of putting their baby down on the floor because they just have this notion or idea in their head that if they're not holding their baby, then they're doing something wrong and that cannot be further from the truth. Your baby needs to have time on the floor. They need to have tummy time. They need to get off of the back of their head so that they don't get plagiocephaly. So make sure that you're getting tummy time 
several times a day. That's why I love just incorporating it into the eat, play, sleep routine. Now that should pretty much sum up your morning and your morning routine with your baby. I do highly recommend getting out of the house as often as you can, at least once a day. Even if it's just going outside for a stroller walk, you need that vitamin D. Your baby needs the vitamin D. They need the exposure to the daylight to help set their circadian rhythm and to reverse their day and night confusion if they are kind of having a hard time with that, then you definitely need to get out of the house. You need to keep your mental health and your sanity at the front of your mind instead of just what your baby needs. You need to prioritize yourself. You need to prioritize your labor and delivery recovery and you need to get up and move and get out of the house and do all the things. Like I cannot drill home enough how important it is to continue having some social interaction and to even if it's just a phone call, it is just so important to do these things when you have a newborn. Remember that it is always perfectly fine and acceptable to enjoy contact naps with your newborn baby. It is a great bonding experience and it is not going to harm your baby's ability to self-soothe or sleep later down the road when you decide that it's time for them to sleep independently. I know this is gonna sound crazy, but it's going to be important for you to make sure that you are almost scheduling when you're gonna take a shower, when you're gonna take naps, when are you going to do all the things that you need to do to take care of yourself when you feel like you are 24 seven taking care of your baby? Ask your spouse or your partner for help. Ask a parent, a friend, a cousin, an aunt, an uncle, a neighbor, anybody that you trust ask them to help you because it should not be all on you all the time. It takes a village and you need a village. Either hire people to be a part of your village, like if I live near you, I will come to your house and help you. If you need to hire a postpartum doula or a sleep consultant or a nanny or whatever it might be, then do it. Isolating yourself in those first few months of motherhood is probably the worst thing that you could do for your mental health. And then it gets you into a routine of just staying home all the time and not exposing yourself and your baby to the world beyond. Just get out there and do it. Now, if you're looking for a chart of activities that will help your child in so many different ways, then check out my newborn course, Baby in Bloom. It is Mama's Guide to the Fourth Trimester, linked in the description box down below. There are all different ideas for all different ages and stages when it comes to literary development and looking at books and reading. Obviously, your newborn baby is not reading, but looking at pictures and even just high contrast images that you can look at with your child. I have so many different ideas in there for that stuff. Sensory experiences, all these different developmental levels and different things that you can do with your baby at each level. I am so excited to share this guide and this course with you guys. So check it out in the description box down below. Let me know about your morning routine with your newborn and keep blooming. Mwah.